otherwise it looks dumb and I'll, I'm talking to no one, really. So yeah, let me know in the chat if you can hear me. And I'll see if everything refreshes. I should have gone live. Yeah, let's see. It's all about knowing if I'm being heard or not. So if someone can let me know in the chat, then I know I can continue. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to fix stuff. Oh, I'm being heard. Yay. Okay, well, as you guys know, the starts of these streams usually are a bit rough. Can't help it. But I'm here, and I'm happy that all of you guys are here as well. So, yeah. Um, I've spent a little over a month in Egypt. Something I never really expected myself to say, but it happened. I'm back, and uh, I think all of you guys are extremely curious what my experience was and what it was like seeing these sites um, touring Egypt with two different tour groups led by the same person. That was Annie XD. He's also here on YouTube, and he's on Twitter and Instagram, and I went with him through AdeptExpeditions.com, and yeah, if you want to book yourself a tour to Egypt in the future, I'm not going to be there, but Johanna James and Annie XD will be there, then yeah, go to AdeptExpeditions.com, book your spot for the March tour of Egypt, and um, yeah, I'm going to tell you all about my experiences how it started, what I did sort of every day, and after that, when I'm done blabbing, because we all know I'm very good at that, um, well, yeah, after I'm done blabbing, I will start answering questions in the chat. So if you guys can mostly leave your questions for, like, more at the end of me blabbing, it would be nice. Otherwise, I'm going to have to, like, scroll up for about like what half an hour to find some questions <laughs> so yeah besides that hi everyone i missed y'all i missed um making vi videos most of all like i love my work and i wasn't able to do any of it but let's start on september 13th I left the Netherlands, I took the Eurostar train to England, and met up with Johanna James, as I was a guest on her first tour in Egypt. Well, it was her second tour, but the first one of her being a co-host, and I was her guest, I was her plus one. Thank you so much, Johanna, thank you so much, because that was amazing, loved it, loved the experience, and we traveled together on a British Airways flight towards Egypt, and we landed on the 14th of September. And the morning of the 15th, I woke up to some amazing news, and I have it here, because it was delivered while I was still in Egypt, but I reached my 100,000 subscribers, and I got my black. Whee! Look at me, look at me. Super happy with this, yeah. I never expected to ever receive this. I never expected to get to 100,000 subscribers. So thank you all so, so much for this. I don't want to smudge it with my fingers because, you know, we have some um, greasy fingers. We humans, it's not a good thing. But yay, I got it. Super happy. So happy to be able to show that to everyone. It's my first big accomplishment. Very nice. So yeah, um, on the 15th of September, I woke up to that news at 4 a.m. in the morning. Because, you know, if you want to experience a sunrise between the Sphinx's paws, you kind of have to wake up very early. So while it was still dark out, we traveled to the Sphinx enclosure and 
yeah, that was an experience. That was definitely an experience. And I can't even describe it. When you arrive, it's still dark. So the Sphinx itself is really dark. And as the sun starts to rise, the Sphinx changes color. And not just one color. Like, the more bright it gets, the more the Sphinx gets bright as well. It's very strange. It's very surreal. And I have this picture on Instagrams. Let me show you because I'm not very good at all this streaming stuff. But like this was the Sphinx when it was still dark. Well, not dark, dark, but I mean, there was no direct sunlight on the Sphinx. You know what I mean? Like the sun is starting to come up, but there's no direct sunlight on the Sphinx. But not even half an hour later, this happens to the Sphinx. The sky turns completely blue because of the sunshine and the Sphinx, it's like it's glowing gold. It's surreal. It's absolutely amazing to experience the changes in the colors of the Sphinx. So yeah, just wanted to show that. After we experienced the sunrise between the Sphinx's paws and we walked around the entire enclosure, like the inside walked around the Sphinx, and Annie XD was telling us all about everything having to do with the Sphinx. But yeah, um, the thing is that I've never seen, I never even thought that the Sphinx would be this big. I knew it was big. I've seen it in pictures. I've seen scales of it with like people next to it, but I've never, never really thought that it was this big. And to see it change, like the color of the Sphinx change when the sun was starting to rise and eventually shining upon it, never really thought that that was a thing. So that was pretty unbelievable. Then we went to the hotel, we had some breakfast, which was nice. And then at around 9 a.m. in the morning, we arrived back at the Giza Plateau, where... It was very crowded. Wow, so many people. And we walked around the Giza Plateau for about five hours. If you think that that's a lot of time, you're sorely mistaken. Because I think we covered about maybe 10% of the Giza Plateau in, that, in those five hours. There's so much to see. I think you would need a couple of weeks to like actually see everything on the Giza Plateau. I do know that on the first day, after those five hours, I got slightly burned on my arms and my legs. Yep. Oops. But um, it turned brown like within two days and I don't really get burned much. I don't burn easily. So like eh, five hours on the Giza Plateau, burning a little bit. Sounds about right. The next day, because I mean... Well, let's continue. The next day, we, I think we went to uh, fly to Luxor, because that one went really fast, actually. The trip we did um, with Johanna, we had a different order than with my trip. So we flew to Luxor, and we um, experienced stuff in Luxor, like we entered the Museum of Luxor, after we landed and we went to the Temple of Man, or the Luxor Temple of Man, um, in the evening. Well, the sun was still up when we arrived, but as we went inside the temple, the sun was starting to go down, which was really awesome because then they turn on the lights in the Luxor Temple, and the temple is lit up so beautifully, you have to just, you just have to experience that temple in the evening. It's also, I think, the only temple in Egypt that's open beyond 5 p.m. So, yeah, I think it's the only temple that gets lit up like this. Incredible. Absolutely adored it. Want to go back tomorrow, because, like, the Luxor Temple of Man was, it's not my favorite, 
but seeing it light up like that was really awesome. And I have some, I think I have some pictures. Yes, I have some stuff for you guys to see. So one sec, I'll show. Because I mean, I'm so good at streaming. Never been great at this. We all know this. I mostly just blab to, you know? So here, here we go. This is me walking inside the Luxor Temple of Man, going through the pillars. This was uh, shot on my phone by um, Mushtaq. Mushtaq was the photographer that we had with us on the first tour. He joined the tour with his son, and it was amazing because he took some brilliant photos of me. Like, usually I find that my face is very hard to capture on a photo. He, he captured it. So this is a picture I took of the pillars, and the sun wasn't down yet in that picture, but as you can see in this picture, the sun is down, and the pillars are completely lit up, and the sky is just dark and blue. It's incredible. I'll show the next picture as well. This is when the sun is completely down, and the stars are already visible and everything. You know? You know? It was just... Beautiful. Also, apparently cats can read hieroglyphics. This is a thing that I didn't know, but this kitty here was sitting, staring at the hieroglyphics on the wall for about, I would say 10, maybe even 15 minutes. And I think most of us, if not all of us in that tour group got a chance to take a picture of that cat. I mean, look at this. This cat is just staring at the hieroglyphs. Apparently, this cat can read it. Like, tell me if you know, if you had a, any idea that cats could read hieroglyphs. Because I didn't. No idea. But apparently, they can. So, yeah, let's go back to the pictures. Because this was fun. So, yeah, this cat apparently can read hieroglyphics. I had no idea. And it's just such a cute cat. This is a picture that photographer took of me at the Luxor Temple of Man. This is another picture that he took of me. Like, I mean, people usually can't take pictures of my face, but he apparently can, which was awesome. Some hieroglyphs in the Temple of Man, because you can see that it's lit up. It's just fascinating. And yeah, loved it. Also, I want a cat like that. Like, I want a cat that can read hieroglyphs and like help me with my studies and stuff, you know? Would be very, very nice. So yeah, um, <laughs> let's continue. The next day, I think, because this is mostly going off of memory and my memory is not really that great, but um, I think the next day we went to, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. The next day we went to the West Bank and it was super, super hot. And when I say super hot, I mean, I was standing at the temple, the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut about 7 a.m. in the morning, like seven in the morning, super early. Annie XT was telling us stuff about like the temple and the construction phases and like the esoteric aspects of this temple sweat was actually dripping down my legs in like small streams not just a few drops here and there but like small streams that's how absolutely hot it was like i thought that we were all like we would all just you know <clears throat> burn because <laughs> it was so hot it was about like 44 celsius which is, I think, above 109 Fahrenheit. It's really hot. And it was really, really humid. I've never experienced humidity in Egypt before, and it was humid. I'm still... I'm st speechless, still. Like, no idea how the first two weeks that I was in Egypt how on earth it was possible to be that humid and hot. 
because I mean I was sweating all day every day and normally when I'm in Egypt I don't sweat at all so that was new so we went to the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut we went to the Colossi of Memnon we went to the Ramesseum we went to Medinet Habu and later in the day we went to the Valley of the Kings in the Valley of the Kings, I only went inside one tomb. Don't come for me. Don't tell me I should have gone in more. The Valley of the Kings, just like Hatshepsut's mortuary temple, are the two, two hottest places in the entirety of Luxor. There's barely any wind. There's just heat from the sun and humidity. So, yeah, I went inside one tomb in the Valley of the Kings. And after that one tomb, I went to sit at the cafe and drank some Coca-Cola. Don't come for me. I apparently needed that Coca-Cola. All right? All right. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> just so you know, if you want to see the Valley of the Kings, I highly recommend going in either December, January or February if you don't really like the heat. That actually goes for the entirety of Egypt. But do know that those are the three busiest months when it comes to tourists, because most tourists doesn't want to go in the heat or don't want to go in the heat or when it's hot in Egypt, you know, which makes sense. But I mean, that's also why it's extremely busy in the months that the temperature is cooler. So you have to, you know, think about do I actually want to see things or do I want to stand in like a, a sea of people like, you know, a sardine in a can kind of thing, you know, think about that or just go in March in the next tour of Annie XD with Johanna James and go to adeptexpeditions.com and book your spot. But yeah, let's continue. Oh, I've almost forgot. Look at me being all blonde. I got the chance to meet Salima Ikram at the Ramesseum. And I'm still speechless. I never expected to ever see her in real life. It was amazing. You can also see on my face that I was feeling very dead inside, which isn't strange because I was already like nearly a week away from home. And we had some really early wake up calls. And it was hot and brutal. But yeah, I met Salima Ikram, which is actually one of my heroes from when I was young. And I actually got to meet her. Holy hell, look at me. Who am I? Like, honestly, who am I? The next day, we went to... Um, yeah, I was already clicking ahead. Why am I like this? Okay, so the next day, we went to Abydos with the Temple of Seti I. We went to the Osirion, and afterwards we went to the Har Temple of... The Dendera Temple of Hathor. Wow, I can't even think and talk anymore. I'm still tired of everything. <laughs> Go spend a month in Egypt and come back and like your brain is all fried at this point. But yeah, no, we went to the Dendera Temple of Hathor, which was absolutely amazing. Highly recommend seeing it for yourself. I mean, you just don't want to really miss it. Then the day afterwards, we went to the Karnak Temple and... In the morning, I mean, Johanna already made a video about this last Sunday. She uploaded, like, yesterday, I think it was, uh, a, temp uh, a video about the statue of Sekhmet at Karnak, which is at, like, a portion of Karnak that's usually not open to the public. It's, like, uh, a special permissions type of thing, and it's uh, not something you can just do when you go there on your own just so you know. So if you want to see the Sekhmet statue, definitely go to adeptexpeditions.com and book your spot because you want to see the Sekhmet statue. But I highly recommend watching her video on it. I'll 
show the thumbnail for that in my browser if I can because I mean we all know I'm not that great in like all this stuff uh, let's see if I can actually do this no it's simple ew I didn't want like uh, I didn't want to show you guys things but yeah here we go gosh damn gosh damn so yeah uh the segment statue anomalies she called it and she uploaded it yesterday just like i thought see my memory still doesn't work amazingly but i mean it sort of works at times but yeah highly recommend watching that video if you want to know more about segment and the experiences that she had and some other people in that tour group had and yeah it was wonderful absolutely wonderful let me go back to oh my gosh oh no no oh my gosh i'm clicking all the wrong things people i am clicking all the wrong things don't know why i can't go back to my original thing don't know why well then i have to do it like this why is everything like this why can't i just do a simple stream this work okay yay it works so yeah thank god i fixed it look at me i fix things sometimes when i'm not blonde so yeah, after we got back from the Dendera Temple of Hathor, we boarded our Nile cruise. And uh, holy hell, that was an experience. And I arrived in my hotel room with Chahana because we shared rooms. And um, this was our view. It's, uh, sorry, the text on screen, it's in Dutch because, hi, I am Dutch. Sorry, that's my native language. And the text says, view of the Nile from the hotel room. Just so you know. But yeah, that's very Dutch. Can't help it. Apparently, I'm Dutch. No way. Yes way. I'm Dutch. Didn't you know? But yeah. <laughs> almost, Laura, my dear Megalith Hunter, almost. View of the Nile from the hotel room. Because Kamer is Rome. But yeah. Awesome. Then uh, the next day we went to the Edfu Temple of Horus. Which was uh, an experience in itself. You have to go by horse and carriage. And they don't go slow. And there's many bumps in the road. And holes in the road and uh, lots lots of traffic and lots of other horses and carriages because all this all these cruise ships dock at the same place and they all want to go to the Edfu Temple of Horus at the same time and it was super crowded there like super crowded but when we arrived Someone from the tour group pointed out that there was an owl sitting on one of the pillars. I have an owl on my arm, as most of you guys know. I can't show it to you, because, you know, I got a shirt on top of it. But yeah, there was an owl. And uh, that owl sat there, at least for the entire duration of me being in that temple. So yeah, that was really nice felt really neat to have an owl with me while I was there and being homesick and all that stuff. I mean, I get homesick pretty quickly nowadays, apparently. Don't know, ask me why. I can't explain it. So, um, yeah, apparently I nowadays get homesick. Again, don't know why. Hate it. But yeah. Also, I've never been away from home this long. So... You know, I've never been away from home for an entire month. Like 15 days was the max I've been away from home. This was an entire month 
didn't ask for it. Mm. Also, no, this is not beer. This is cider with raspberry flavor. Because, hi, hello, have you met me? I'm allergic to beer and wine. Can't drink it. So, okay. After the Edfu Temple, the Nile cruise has to sail south. And you go to Kom Ombo. And at Kom Ombo, with this first tour group, we had the absolute best of fun. Like, honestly, all these tour groups at Kamambo were, like, very serious, and all these other, like, tour managers or whatever you want to call them, like, they rush through the site. Like, here you have this, here you have that, here you have this, here you have that, keep walking. Like, it's a bit like that. And all these people at Kamambo, all these other tour groups, like, they looked so miserable absolutely miserable and our tour group had the absolute best of fun like we had our egyptologist sahila with us and when we were in a group the tour group of johanna's tour was like 35 people that's a lot of people that's truly a lot of people and you have to carry 35 people around these temples. So for Sahila, our Egyptologist, to keep the tour group like together, she would scream or yell, Adapt! Adapt Expeditions! And then we would all add dot com. Because, you know, that's fun. So at Komambo, I think most of the other tour people or like or tour groups, I think the most thing that they heard that day was adeptexpeditions.com because we would scream it constantly while we were at the temple and yeah we all couldn't stop laughing and having fun and some of the other people from the tour groups looked kind of jealous at our group because we had actual fun how dare we have fun at a temple in Egypt but yeah that was really dope and um, loved it. The next day we went to Aswan and we saw the unfinished obelisk of Hatshepsut in the quarry of Aswan. Where else? And after that we went to the Philae Temple of Isis and you have to like take a small boat to get to the temple which was really awesome and the boat was, uh, the driver of the boat was a person from now I'm like flunking on names. It was a Nubian from Nubian descent. So that was really dope to see the difference between someone from Egyptian descent and someone from Nubian descent. And they also speak in a different language. They speak in Nubian as well as Egyptian. So that was really awesome. Also, the cruise the first time was absolutely amazing. I was in the middle of the boat high up, um, didn't hear anything, just relaxed for many days and loved it. I also bought the Ankh necklace. The Ankh symbol is of white gold and the necklace itself is of silver. I loved it and I mean, I just had to buy it. Hi, have you met me? I sometimes buy, buy jewelry. Don't ask me why. I'm like this. And um, <clears throat> After that, the next morning, unfortunately, Johanna had to leave us all because she had this amazing deal for a television series and she had to go back and film. And we went to Elephantine Island later that day and we stayed at the Movin Pick Hotel, resort hotel thing. And that was incredible. I had some incredible views there as well. Not sure if I don't know, I didn't share any of the pictures from that day. But that's fine. That's fine. Okay, what did I do? I did share this one from me and some people at the unfinished obelisk in the Osman Quarry. <clears throat> I don't know why I didn't like share the other picture, but I mean, I can upload it on my Instagram later on anyway. So yeah. Mm. Let's see, did I? Ah! See, I uploaded this one of like the sun setting on 
the Nubian lands from my hotel room. Oh, thank you, Anil Nakian, for the super chat. That's so kind. Um, also, we um, I had a very awesome small thing experience with NEXT, Mary, Mushtaq, and myself. We went to a different temple. It's a temple of Isis and Aswan, which is not really known. And Mushtaq took this amazing picture of me while we were there. And yeah, that was an, a wonderful experience, just the four of us. And yeah, that was amazing. Absolutely loved it. The next day we flew back to Cairo and my body was a bit, sort of, maybe almost done with me. So we went to Abu Sir Abu Ghraib, which was amazing. And I took this picture of me while sitting in the shade because, again, it was brutally hot and extremely humid while we were there. And this is me just having to sit and wind down and get my heart rate to like lower, which is very important. This was at Abu Sir. Later on, they went to Abu Ghraib, and by that time, I felt like I went way past my limits, like bodily, like like physically speaking. You know what I mean? Because uh, I still have a bit of a crooked body. I didn't receive disability pay for no reason, unfortunately. And when everyone went to Abu Ghraib, I stayed behind with one of the other tour members, which was Mary. And we actually ended up sitting in an animal sanctuary in the middle of Egypt, in the middle of Cairo, sort of middle of Cairo. And um, yeah, we saw a horse with like a broken bone being brought in and uh, they started to like make a splint and hopefully fix the bone and other horses and donkeys that like were in need of care and didn't look too great and they got the care that they needed and we also saw thick horses with like thick bellies thick booties lots of muscle so i mean they really did do an amazing and great job the next day i was knackered like i was done my body was so tired and everyone went to Saqqara, and i had to skip out on that day I ended up editing a video and uploaded that video on my YouTube channel later on. And uh, yeah, I had to take a day for myself. The next morning, everyone went to the museum. I didn't go to the museum that morning, but in the evening, everyone and I went to the Great Pyramid for the private visit, like the two hour long private visit inside the Great Pyramid which is an incredible experience, highly recommended. And yeah, I mean, if you have the ability to go on a tour to Egypt, I cannot stress this enough, but just go. It's a life-changing experience for sure. Like, I cannot comprehend how lucky I am to experience this, even though I was incredibly homesick. And yes, I definitely, definitely felt like, oh, I want to go home. Oh, I did not miss Karnak, Tigger. No, no, I didn't miss Karnak. I went there twice, actually. I missed Saqqara on the first tour because I, I, I was there on two tours. First tour, I was a guest of Jahana and the second tour, I was the co-host. So yeah, then we had the, well, after the Great Pyramid uh, meditation session and our private visit, and you have to like climb all the way up. And then we went into the Queen's Chamber and you have to go through a tunnel. And then after that, a, a lot of people went to the subterranean pit. And I know my body and I know that I was not going to be able to handle that. So I 
graciously thanked, but no thank, <laughs> for the subterranean pit. I just went outside, cooled down because I was super hot and it was slimy the first time we went into the Great Pyramid that evening. It was super hot inside, it was extremely humid, and the granite inside the Great Chamber, I cannot have a different word to explain this but it felt slimy and uh yeah that i mm, 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 hated it it felt slimy and i hated it it's not the experience that i expected from the gray chamber <laughs> thankfully my second experience in the gray chamber was a lot better but i mean that slimy stuff on the granite didn't feel great also i have cat this is cat layla she wanted to say hi apparently um so yeah after her tour was done we went to the farewell dinner for the first tour had some wonderful photos and conversations and we said goodbye to everyone because either they were leaving that same night or early in the morning or later in the day and the next day I woke up and I went into the guest house, which is in the middle of Cairo. And uh, yeah, it was awesome, but also very much an experience. Very much an experience. Um, yeah, can't give that any other words. Also, I have friends living in Cairo, so thankfully I was going to see them. But not before I went and met up with Curtis Ryan Woodside with Next. So this is the picture that we took after we met. We were supposed to like meet and meet up for drinks and, you know, maybe talk for about an hour or two. We ended up sitting there for about, I think, close to a few hours. <laughs> like... We sat there for quite a long time, actually, a lot longer than all of us expected. And uh, yeah, that was really cool also. And then on the Sunday, that was the 2nd of October, I went to see my friends in uh, Madi. They live in Cairo in the area of Madi. We have a pork business. Yes, you can get yourself pork in Cairo. Go to porkinegypt.com, get your pork. Um, Elena and Martin, I had the best of time with them, loved it, and I also went to see the obelisk of Senusret, and the remnants of the sun temple that was around it at one point in time, again with Curtis, and we had an amazing time, it was lovely hanging out with him for a couple hours walking around yeah it was just lovely we had fun conversations and we had a i think we really had a great time and yeah this is me actually in the temple of seti the first and this is my view from the guest house of the pyramids and uh yeah i mean that was quite a view <laughs> quite a view yeah, I mean, the experience in the guest house wasn't necessarily the greatest because, I mean, the food in the village is not really my forte. Yeah, I had some trouble with food, but I guess the view really made up for a lot of it, which was great. And then on October 5th, I start and met up with everyone in the tour, which was amazing. In my tour, and my tour was a lot smaller because I went from the first tour being a guest of 35 people to my own tour, or like the, my, the tour that I co hosted, and we had 12 people, which was a lot easier to manage, honestly. Although, honestly, apparently, a group of 12 people can get like separated from each other equally as much as a group of 35 who would have thunked right who would have thunked why do you need to wash 
Why do you need to wash? Why do you need some attention? You got kisses. Also, she has this band and it's uh, got pheromones in it because she's um, a bit stressed since my other ca cat passed away and I left for about a month. So she ended up being like a terrorizing cat to my boyfriend, which wasn't very nice of her. So um, we got her this band with pheromones and it's helping her relax. So yeah, let's continue the story. So the next day, after I met the group and like we had our entire meet and greet and everything, we again woke up at 3.15 I'm not kidding. 3.15 for the sunrise between the Sphinx's paws. Like, that's very early in the day. It wasn't fun. It, it, it wasn't fun. No. So, um, yeah. After that sunrise visit, the second sunrise visit for me, um, also, big difference. What? Why, why are you staring at me? I didn't do anything. Stop staring. Okay, she's staring, apparently. It feels weird to be stared at like this. But yeah, no, the second time we went to the Sphinx enclosure, it was darker out still, because we arrived earlier. And there were clouds in the sky. And the Sphinx was really, really dark. And it took a lot longer for the Sphinx to light up like it did the first time. But eventually it did get that same glowing effect with the sunlight. Girl, Lila. Lila. Don't kiss me. No, no, no. Don't. No, no, no. Okay. I like you. But, like, go to sleep or something. Not for you. <laughs> okay. Yes, there is a 3.15 a.m. <laughs> so after the... Oh, it's a staring contest. Ah, Henrik, thank you. I had no idea. But yeah, no, um, at the Sphinx, actually, I took a picture, a couple pictures of Next, who went into, like, the hole at the butt of the Sphinx. And he filmed a little bit inside, and then he came out and had to take pictures of him. And while at the same time, you know, keeping a close eye on the guard to, you know, not get caught and get in trouble. Otherwise, we would have just given them some bakshish. It would have been fake. It's fine. Bakshish is apparent is the um, Egyptian word for like tips, money. We want some bakshish, huh? After the Sphinx uh, visit, sunrise experience we went back for breakfast and then later on we went to the Giza plateau to again walk around for uh, about five hours yes i yawn still a lot i yawn a lot i'm still very 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 tired sorry so yeah no um we went again to the Giza plateau to walk around for about five hours and if you don't know this apparently october 6th the day we went to the Giza plateau is a national holiday in Egypt. Yeah, it was super crowded. I thought the Giza Plateau, the first time we went there in September was crowded because it was on a Friday. I had no idea that on national holiday, it would be this crowded. So yeah, it, it, so many people everywhere. We felt like sardines in a can on the plateau. Also, there were some um, people working for the Egyptian government with like hammers and stuff, and they were smashing up the black basalt that's like next to the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, from like the, the remnants of the old temple. Yeah, they were smashing the black basalt. Also, uh, I've never done a video with Bright Insight, so 
Got the wrong person, dude. Got the wrong person. But yeah, no, we walked around. Sahila, our Egyptologist, went blonde a couple times, so she led us like through the desert all the way down to the Sphinx instead of doing that on camel. And uh, also, um, she went very blonde and took us all the way back walking. So by the time we um, were done with that very first experience, that first day, uh, everyone felt a bit dead inside. And the next day we had Saqqara to go to, the day I previously skipped, you know, damn it. So yeah. Also, thank you, Yelperman, for both your super chats. That's so kind of you. <laughs> the next day we went to Saqqara. We started at the pyramid complex or like the burial complex of the pyramid of Djoser, the step pyramid. It's incredible. I presented at the entrance. I spoke about the enclosure wall, the height of it, the length of it, the in which angle it was built, like on which axis and all that stuff. And that was really dope. It was the first time that I presented during the tour and, uh, or like this, sort of the second time because on the first day at the Giza Plateau, I sort of presented a little bit, but not everyone was present because most people, like I said, were feeling a little bit dead inside. Why are you like shaking this much? Go and sit on a different chair, baby. Come, go. Thanks. Because, like, I'm getting, like, stressed from the fact that you're shaking. Go sleep. Just go sleep. So, yeah. Um, so, we went to the Pyramid of Djoser, went inside, saw the sarcophagus, which was incredible. Also, I completely flunked. Why am I like this? People, why am I like this? Why were they smashing the basalt? I have absolutely no idea. And when we tried to like take pictures of it, they stopped completely because they didn't want any of that to be like evidence or like, what? It was really weird seeing them smash up the salt. And like they had like this, this mortar and they were like sort of rearranging it, like reconstructing. But when you're reconstructing something, you don't smash it to bits. So it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense, honestly. Also, yeah, um, this is me on a camel. Yeah, this is me on a camel on the Giza Plateau. Really dope. Really, really dope. Me on a camel. And this is also me on a camel on the Giza Plateau really freaking dope love the experience second time of me in my life sitting on a camel highly recommend doing it if you're in egypt but like if you're in egypt and you want to go sit on a camel i would like to tell you look for emed on the giza plateau ask for emed on the giza plateau don't just go and sit on any camel because they're going to rip you off and it's going to be extremely expensive and the camels won't really be taken care of. At least not well. But Emed really does take a lot of good care. Like, he does take good care of his camels and he gives you a good price. So look for Emed on the Giza Plateau. This camel uh, was aptly named Tattoo. And the reason I had to sit on tattoo was because I have tattoos. <laughs> Go figure, right? The next day we went, like I said, to the Step Pyramid of Djoser. This is me with the pyramid in the background. Here you have the pyramid in the background. Really dope pyramid. Absolutely loved it. This is the Hepset Court. And I covered all of this in a video on my channel about the step pyramid complex of Djoser. The entire burial complex, I go over everything, the measurements, when it was built, how long the building phase took place, all that stuff, everything that they found, 
in this complex i went over it in a video i think it's like 20 minutes long by now also yes cat is back if you thought that me putting the cat on a different chair was like actually going to help me get rid of the cat you can see that i was sorely mistaken this cat is a cat that doesn't really go away <laughs> if she wants attention she's gonna get attention so yeah now she wants attention from the masses that's all y'all so you know say hi to the cat or something also no camels are not nasty people really camels that are not being well taken care of will act nasty because they will hate people go figure if you don't treat an animal right the animal's not gonna like you and other people what no way yeah honestly camels that are taken good care of will be very friendly and nice and good just so you know and uh, no the necklaces aren't new the upper necklace with the unk is new i bought it on the nile cruise in the first tour so yeah oh my god rick bird thank you so much for the super chat i definitely had a good trip thank you so yeah let's go back go back let's go back so yeah, the Hepset Court. Highly recommend watching the Joser video if you haven't already. So yeah. Um, I also went inside the pyramid. This is the reconstructed entrance. Or like later reconstructed. Like this is the later entrance, but whatever. It still looks cool. It still has the old wood. Let me go back because you weren't able to see it because I didn't pause on time. Who am I? I'm so bad at doing live streams, honestly. I really suck at this stuff. Here we go. Pause. If you see the white pillar on the right side, you can see a brown bit sticking out. If you see the brown bit sticking out, that is petrified wood. Okay, let that sink in. That is petrified wood that is over 4,600 years old. So yeah, no, honestly. Let this sink in. Petrified wood, more than 4,600 years old. That is crazy, absolutely crazy. But yeah, I experienced that. Let's continue. Let's press play again. So yeah, here we have like, you go and walk and then someone walked inside my screen and I hate when people do that because you know, I always like to take pictures of things and make it look like no one's there, even though there's a lot of people around me. But yeah, here you have the sarcophagus inside the Djoser Step Pyramid, really awesome. Yeah, really cool. Also, yes, wood can petrify in 4,000 years. Depends on circumstances. Heyo. Also, yes, I'm starting to get tired. I'm already filling a full hour and I still have like most of my trip to cover. So like I said at the beginning, I'm probably gonna blab a lot. I'm blabbing a lot. Woo. It was a reconstruction as in they opened that bit of the pyramid, but everything that you see is 4,600 years old. It's just that they chopped away some of the stone to create the hallway inside. So it's not a reconstruction as in they placed blocks, but they reconstructed it in the way of opened it but the pillars that you see were placed there 4670 years ago if not more give or take so yeah and yes petrify uh wood can petrify in about 4000 years it all depends on the conditions and everything and apparently the conditions here were perfect 
Also, Skull, Hendrik. I'll drink with you. Very nice. Let's continue. Because, like, otherwise I'm going to completely lose track of everything. So, yeah. Here you have the snakes on the enclosure wall, the inside enclosure wall, because it had to. And this is for the next part, so let's continue. Back to my face. Why don't I just make a part two? I've never made a part two on my channel for everything. And actually, there's a very good reason that I haven't. So on YouTube, when you make part one, people will watch. And when you make a part two, about 20% of the original people will watch, which means that a part two will never actually do well. So I never do part twos. And I normally stream for about two hours, and normally I talk for about 30 to 60 minutes, and then afterwards I take about 60 minutes to answer questions in the chat. This time it's probably going to be a diff bit different because I don't necessarily aim to be streaming more than two hours because it's very taxing and I'm talking a lot and, you know, it takes a lot of energy to sit here and talk like this. Um, but yeah, so I'm probably going to leave um, less time at the end for like questions, but we'll see. I'll just continue. I'll just hurry. I'm going to hurry. So after the Dozer Pyramid Complex, we went to the uh, Unas Pyramid, which was awesome. I went inside. And at the Unas Pyramid, I didn't take pictures of this, but I'll, I can ask Next or NEXT for footage or whatever, or like pictures. But when you're standing in like the room in the Unas Pyramid with the sarcophagus, on the walls, you have like two different types of stone alabaster and I think limestone it was and the box the sarcophagus is of granite and when they dim the lights and you put a flashlight to the side of the wall you can actually see the indents of a relief of the pharaoh you don't see that with the lights on and it's on both sides in the alabaster which is really awesome also my watch is telling me to like stand because I've been sitting for an hour. No way. No way. I've been sitting for an hour. How dare I? But yeah, no, you can see like the indents of a relief of like a pharaoh on both sides next to the sarcophagus. And only when the flashlight is hitting it from a certain angle will you be able to see it. And that was just incredible. I didn't expect that. What the hell? Oh, my cat really doesn't care that I'm talking to, like, no one in her mind. Because she's very used to this. Um, <laughs> she's been with me for nearly eight years now. And I've been filming videos for nearly three years now. And also, normally, I speak a lot to myself. So, yeah. No, she's very used to me just blabbing and talking to someone, no one. She doesn't care. After the Unas Pyramid, we went to the Serapium, or the Serapium, as most Egyptian people will call it, but I prefer the pronunciation of Serapium. Don't ask me why. Also, I don't drink beer. Like I said, it's cider with a raspberry flavor. I'm allergic to beer. No beer for me, sadly. So we went to the Serapium, and that was wonderful. That's an experience of itself. How on earth they got those massive, massive sarcophagi in there? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I have zero explanation for you guys. So, um, yeah. If you have an explanation, let me know. Unless it's aliens or like ancient advanced civilization theory, because that's not really my thing, not really my forte. There has to be a different explanation that's like either overlooked or discarded or like not thought of. Maybe. But um, yeah, after that, we went to the Bent Pyramid. I did not go inside. 
so sorry, but like my body was already telling me you're at your limit. And uh, yeah, after the bent pyramid, we went to the uh, red pyramid. And I also did not go inside because again, my body was like, yeah, no, let's not do that. Uh, the pharaoh is Unas. The pyramid of Unas. The pharaoh was Unas. So yeah, sorry. Uh, should have probably said that. Scusi. Scusi. But yeah, no. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so like I said, I didn't go into the red pyramid either. Just too much of a strain to my body. And the next day we had like a 4 a.m. wake up call to fly to Luxor. Again, a 4 a.m. wake-up call. I've never woken up at 4 a.m. this much in my entire life as this past month. Honestly. I'm still tired from all the 4 a.m. wake-up calls. It's crazy. But yeah, we flew to Luxor. Everyone went to the museum. My body was already telling me that I needed to, like, take time for myself. Because, um... Yeah, it was already hurting, and we had uh, the Temple of Man, the Luxor Temple of Man visit in the evening. So I had to take a step back and let everyone enjoy the museum without me complaining about like pain in my body and everything. So I stayed outside, called a bit with my boyfriend, we FaceTimed, and afterwards I joined everyone to go to the um, hotel. Also, it's not that I'm uh, allergic to the malt. There is a type of yeast that gets released or created or whatever you want to call it in the creation of beer and wine. And it's that particular type of yeast that I'm allergic to. It sucks to be me, I guess. I also have to like, ugh, sneeze. I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh, T-S-C-T-H, that's just Henrik. You can just call him Henrik. Much easier. Much easier. So yeah, uh, in the evening, we went to the Luxor Temple of Man, which was amazing. And I now have to sneeze, I think. Yep. I have to sneeze. <coughs> oh, gosh, damn. <laughs> I hate sneezing. Doesn't sound good. So yeah, uh, sorry for everyone who turned deaf right now. You're welcome. So we went to the Luxor Museum of Man, uh, the Luxor Museum and the Temple of Man in the evening, which was incredible. And I loved it. Again, second time we were there. The big difference between the first time we were there with a tour group of 35 and the second time we were there with a tour group of 12 is the fact that this group of 12 was able to like get dispersed more than the group of 35. I didn't expect that up front. Also, while we were there at the Luxor Temple of Man, there was this Italian designer guy thing. Completely forgot his name already. But um, he celebrated his 50th year in like the field of fashion or something. Stefano Ricci was his name, maybe. Never heard of him before. Haven't heard of him since. But um, yeah, lots of decorations and that um, looked kind of cool, I think, I guess. But yeah was super, super, super crowded because of that. Yeah. Wasn't cool. The day after that, uh, we were supposed to go to the Karnak Temple, but we didn't because everyone went to the West Bank because we had a switch up in the itinerary and my body was just uh, like, um, no. I woke up that morning, wasn't able to... Um, move my lower part of my body because the pain was just too much and I had to stay in bed for a couple hours. Um, yeah, I mean, 
like I said earlier, there's a reason I used to receive disability pay. It's not fun, but unfortunately, I have nerve damage in my lower spine from my tailbone surgery. And um, yeah, sometimes that can flare up. And if it does, I just have to accept the fact that I'm not able to do anything that day. So yeah, just so you know. Um, so I didn't go to that temple, but the day afterwards, we went to Abydos. We again went to the temple of Seti I. We again went to the Osirion, and we went to the Dendera Temple of Hathor. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So, whew, highly recommend. Like I said in the start of this tour, like if you ever get the chance to do a tour of Egypt, I highly recommend going with NEXT from AdeptExpeditions.com and do it because it's, it's a life-changing experience and it changes your view of life and everything. So definitely recommend it. The day afterwards, we went to the Karnak Temple and... The Karnak Temple, for the second time, for me personally, was a better experience than the first time, because this time with the Sekhmet statue, I had my own experience that I'm not necessarily gonna share. I might make a video on it, but I mean, Johanna already did a video on it, so I don't really think that I'm gonna make a video on it, but on the other hand, the experience that I had for me felt personal and I have shared it with some of my friends, but at the same time, I think, and I hope all y'all will forgive me for this, but yeah, I think I'm going to keep my experience to myself. So, sorry. Uh, the only thing I will share with you guys is that I felt extreme peace when I stood in front of her statue, alone, in the dark. And, um, yeah, that's that. Later in the Karnak Temple, I changed our route. I asked NEXT if it was able, if, if the group was able to possibly see the Red Chapel. And there's a massive reason why I wanted to see the Red Chapel at the Karnak Temple Complex. For those who don't know this, um, I made a video on the life of Pharaoh Hatshepsut, the female Pharaoh, who was erased from history later on. And Hatshepsut was incredibly important for ancient Egyptians for like that time period. She did really great things. Under her rule, borders were broadened. Um, Trade relationships were strengthened and peace was there in ancient Egypt. Like, it was a very peaceful time. So, for her to later be erased in history is really a bad thing. Also, lots of historians for a very, 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 very long time thought that it was her stepson slash nephew, Tutmosis III, who tried to deface her, or who defaced her, or tried to erase her from history. But there is a piece of evidence actually counter-claiming this. Or like, there is evidence of the fact that that's impossible, because he actually honored her. Most people don't know this, so I created a video on this. And... That one piece of evidence that has survived all these thousands of years is there in the Red Chapel at the Karnak Temple Complex. So I asked NEXT if we could go there. And here you can see the back of the Red Chapel at the Karnak Complex. The depiction is at the front of the temple in the very first part when you come when you step in, because this is the back, when you enter from the front, when you look to your left, 
on the left wall in the upper right corner is a stone where you can see Hatshepsut and Tutmosis III in a loving embrace and the hieroglyphs on that slab actually tell the tale about Tutmosis honoring the great pharaoh slash goddess and that part of goddess shows that Hatshepsut had already passed away at the time of the creation of that depiction of that relief scene so he honored her after her death that's the one big piece of evidence that we have that Tutmosis III never tried to deface Hatshepsut he honored her and we saw that. I saw it with my own eyes. I mean, Barry, I'm not sure if Barry is still here in the chat, but um, he was there in the tour group, Barry Walser, with his wife and two of his friends. And uh, they saw how extremely excited I was standing in the Rat Chapel watching that stone. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Highly recommend watching it. And I explain to you where it is so yeah and the next day because we need to go continue uh the Nile cruise for me the second time was a very different experience um i laid on like the upper floor but all the way down to the machine room and uh it was very loud because the Nile was low the water in the Nile was low so there's a lot of sound and vibration because the Nile isn't deep, but it was like shallow. And I didn't sleep the entire night because of the sound from the machine room. And I wasn't the only one. Two other people from that tour group who were like me, sleeping next to the machine room, didn't sleep either. It was like 90 decibels on average, which isn't really a sound that you can sleep in, unfortunately. So yeah, I had to skip on the Edfu Temple of Horus and the Kom Ombo visit that day, unfortunately. So yeah, um, then the evening afterwards, we docked at like early, early 11 p.m. and we could sleep in until like 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning. So I had about like eight and a half, maybe nine hours of sleep, which was amazing. So we went to the unfinished obelisk at the Aswan Quarry and we went to the Philae Temple again. Loved both visits. Absolutely loved it. The day afterwards, we flew back to Cairo. And for me, the day of flying back to Cairo was a bit different. And the reason for that, don't go on the table. Since when are you allowed? What the hell? Cat? Why are cats like this? Why are they just like, oh, hey, this is a rule that you have enforced like when I was about seven years ago, like when I was about, what, two months old when I told you not to go on my table? Why would you now try and go on my table? Cats. Okay, so we flew back to Cairo the next day, which is already Friday, October 14th. And, um, yeah, I have my two friends living in Cairo and I arranged to visit them. So I spent a couple hours with them and it was very much needed. Also, because I know that I won't be going back to Egypt in the foreseeable future. Like it's not going to happen within a year or two. So sorry, I won't be touring Egypt for at least like two years. Don't come for me in the comments. Don't hate on me. This was like a real experience, okay? Like it was a real experience. Also, uh, me being away from home for like a month is a lot. It's taxing. So yeah, sorry, not sorry. If you wanna tour with me in Egypt, maybe wait for like two years or just go with Johanna cause she's so much fun. She is a lot more fun than me. I mean, highly recommend going with her uh, in March. Go to adeptexpeditions.com. A 
The next day we went to the Egyptian museum in the morning, which was wonderful. I like museums. I saw some stone axes, stone tools from the very, very, very ancient Egyptians. Which was really dope to see, actually. So we walked around the Egyptian museum. And afterwards, I think we went to the papyrus shop. I'm sorry, don't hate on me, but I do not like papyrus. I think it smells really bad. It gives me migraines. I don't like papyrus. Um, I went to my to Egypt in June with my grandpa, like everyone knows. I took my grandpa to Egypt and um, I told him up front, I hate papyrus. Don't buy me papyrus. It's just it's just gonna give me a migraine and I'm gonna put it like in a place like in like like storage units or something because I cannot handle the smell. It gives me migraines. And um guess what my grandpa gave me? He gave me a papyrus and I'm not one to throw away a gift. So now I have a roll of papyrus in my storage unit. Yay. I don't like papyrus. I think it smells bad. So sorry. For those who like papyrus, enjoy it. Like, honestly, enjoy it. But it just gives me migraines. And I don't want migraines. So yeah, don't give me papyrus. In the evening, we went to the... Um, Great Pyramid for our private visit, two hours. This time, the inside was not slimy and it was not as humid and not as hot. It was still humid, it was still hot, but not as. Much better. Also, I don't care, Dino GT, that no one cares, that you think that no one cares. But I mean, this is me blabbing on a live stream. And, um, yeah, this is not going to change. When I do a live stream, I blab about whatever. I just like blabbing. So, yeah. Um, all right. What else do we have? So, yeah, we went to the Great Pyramid private visit. This time I went in as the very last person. Because the first time I felt really, really rushed. Maybe this sounds weird, but if I feel rushed because I hear footsteps behind me, I tend to walk faster. And when you climb inside a pyramid, when your body is already telling you that you're extremely tired and fatigued and like beyond your limits, um, it's not good to feel rushed and walk even faster. So the first time I went into the Great Pyramid, I felt super rushed and it took me about Three hours for my heart rate to go down again and to feel normal again, which isn't normal, which isn't good, which isn't healthy. So the second time I went into uh, into the Great Pyramid, I decided to go as the very, very, very last person to go in. And I took my time, filmed it in Dutch. So I'm never going to show that video to you guys. So sorry. So, so sorry. But like I speak in Dutch to the people at home, like my sister, who's never going to be able to see the Great Pyramid from the inside, and my boyfriend, who's never going to see the Great Pyramid on the inside because, honestly, he doesn't really care, and he might as well not care. I don't care that he doesn't care. I also think that he never watched that video. I do know that his, his brother and my sister-in-law did watch the video, and they loved it. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, and my mother-in-law watched the video. She laughed too. I make weird comments and stuff. Funny jokes. So yeah, um, afterwards we had the farewell dinner and I said goodbye to everyone. Went to my room, slept, and the next morning I flew back to the Netherlands after about 35 days away from home. 35 days away from home. So yeah, not good for me. So I return on October 16th, which as you can look at your calendar is about eight days ago now. 
I'm still sleepy. I'm still tired. I'm still tired. <gasps> and now I have to like get ready for my uh, driving exams that I have next week, my written driving exam. So I have to study for that. And I want to start making videos. And some of the videos that I want to make are on the structures that I've seen in Egypt, which is amazing. And I want to share that with you and I want to research it and share my research with you. I also want to talk about the erosion that I saw at the Giza Plateau. And I'm not speaking about the erosion in the Sphinx enclosure, not at all. That's not what I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about the erosion on the Giza Plateau where some of the stones, not all of them, but some of the stones have the same sort of erosion pattern that I have seen with stones in Malta. But the reasons for the erosion, even though the erosion patterns look similar, nearly the same, the reason for the erosion is vastly different. And I want to talk about that. And that's probably one of my first videos to go up on the channel. Later this weekend, hopefully, I have a geologist actually writing a bit for that video. She would like to stay anonymous, so I'm going to respect that. She might use a pseudonym for her works online, but we're going to have to wait and see. Most likely, she will just remain anonymous for at least my party or like my video. But yeah, just so you know. Also, yes, the Dutch get like X amount of vacation days, but the person that I'm dating is in the military, he's in the Navy, so that's completely different. Plus, he spent nearly five years on ships away from home. So he's not the kind of person that, that would like to travel at this point in his life, maybe ever again. And I respect that. We all have to respect other people and their choices. You know, I like to travel when I can, but also until April, when I go to Malta, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to stay at home. <laughs> I'm tired of traveling this past year. I've traveled. I haven't traveled much in my life until the age of 26. I hadn't even traveled at all. Then I went to Egypt twice. And then last November, I went to, this is like a speed travel year for me. So in November, I went to England. In December, I went to Sweden. In February, I went to Malta. In April, I went back to England. In June, I went to Egypt. And now in September, October, I went to Egypt. That's eight times traveling within 11 months. I am very, 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 very tired of traveling at this point, and that's okay. Also, please don't ask me to like come to you or like your country or your state or your town or whatever. Please don't. I like my life. I like the person I'm with. Don't even think for a second that's something different. And also, I would never like meet up with a stranger from the internet ever. So if you really thought that, you're here for the wrong reasons. I want to share history with you. I want to share my thoughts of history with you. It's about that. It's not about me <laughs> at all. Just making that extremely clear right now. I do not want that. I'm not doing a live stream for people to be weird at me. I'm doing a live stream because I would like to share my experience of traveling Egypt for a full month. It was taxing on my body. I had a lot of trouble with the food because there's not much that I can eat when I'm in Egypt without like getting either food poisoning or extreme tummy issues because the bacteria there are really bad for me. Also, uh, sleep really wasn't a thing that I could get regularly that had to do with many factors. I'm just tired. 
But the experience itself, being at the temples, walking there, touching things, seeing things with my own eyes, that was life-changing. So yeah, and also I talk about history. 90% of my channel is about history. So yeah, thank you. Um, also, I think we can open the questions at this point. I mean, I've blabbed for about an hour and a half, sort of, you know? Um, so yeah, if you have any questions that you would like to ask me, ask away. Please keep them to like either historic subjects or, you know, my trip the past month of my life. But yeah, please don't ask about my personal life because I'm not gonna answer it anyway. Just so you know. All right? All right. So, open the questions. In ancient times, didn't Egypt have a milder climate? Not necessarily, actually. Not necessarily. Um, the climate hasn't changed that much in the past 5,000 years, I believe. It could have been a bit cooler, but I mean, honestly, most likely probably similar to nowadays. <laughs> Henrik, did you steal the capstone for me? I need a centerpiece for my dining table. No, sorry, Henrik. I did not. I did not steal anything for anyone because I don't steal anything ever. Uh, the pyramids weren't painted originally. They weren't painted white, they had capstones, white limestone capstones. So just so you know, so that made them look white. Um, I don't need to see a doctor. I didn't catch anything. I didn't get sick. I tried to explain that, just so you know. I My stomach, I almost tore a hole in my stomach from pain medication after my tailbone surgery. So, yeah, that's why I can't handle a lot of food from, like, other countries when the bacteria in those countries aren't really great. In the Netherlands, we have one of the highest standards of food quality in the world. So I'm used to, like, nearly no bacteria in my food. So yeah, in Egypt, every bit of food that you eat has some level of bacteria in it. That's something I can't deal. I didn't catch COVID. I didn't catch a bug. I didn't catch anything. I didn't get sick at all. I was extremely careful. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Did I draw buildings with measurements? No, I did not. Mm. Let's see. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mike. Uh, I'm also glad that I'm back home safe. So yeah, uh, thank you for the wishing me luck on my driving exam. It's the written exam, and afterwards I can finally start my lessons. Um, Bob Miller, what amazed me the most? The Grand Gallery and the Great Pyramid. Um, actually standing there and looking up and looking at how absolutely massive it was it definitely changed my perspective of it and yeah it's incredible uh you just joined and can i repeat everything discussed in the last hour no sorry steve you're just gonna have to watch it back is it dangerous to stay in the pyramids for long concerning fungal growth or spores the great pyramid not so dangerous as far as i know but the bent pyramid and the red pyramid especially the red pyramid because apparently the room inside the red pyramid has this very strong ammonia smell uh yeah that's a bit dangerous so i mean ammonia is a bit dangerous what's my favorite dynasty um old kingdom like the joser dynasty fourth or fifth from the top of my head uh and yeah like queen Hatshepsut or like Pharaoh Hatshepsut, her dynasty as well. Uh, question, where did you learn English? I'm a business English teacher here and you have amazing skills. Well, thank you, Noel. Um, mostly from watching TV as a kid and my mom spoke a bit of English 
in the house when I was young and yeah from like school and teaching myself because I like the I like the language uh, did I follow the Nile from north to south or vice versa with mature groups uh, we went from Luxor down to Aswan so from Luxor to Edfu to Komombo to Aswan on both tours and the first tour we even went all the way down in Aswan to Elephantine Island so yeah from north to south uh, I did visit the Bent and Red Pyramid, but I did not go inside those two pyramids. Did I see any decline in water levels? Uh, yes, I did see a decline in the water levels in... Um, well, let's see. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I did see a decline in the water levels in the Nile at... I think like from Luxor down, the water levels really showed that the water was lower, especially the second time we went to the Philae temple. It was extremely noticeable that the water level was like at least like nearly a meter, I think, lower. It was quite a big, massive change. Uh, thank you, Kali Hippie D, for the super chat. Or super sticker, I think it was. It's really kind of you. How about the Sahara? It used to be less dry 5,000 to 11,000 years ago. There's evidence it was wetter, greener. It depends. Because when you speak about 5,000 years ago, you talk about before the creation of like the step pyramid of Djoser. So, which means that the climate around the time that they started building these magnificent things was about the same as nowadays. What was the most unexpected thing that I saw? The Sekhmet statue and the way it had an effect on a lot of people. Do we know when the water left the Sahara? Well, you're asking the wrong question, I'm afraid. Um, A couple million years ago, about like 35, 36 million years ago, there was the Tethys Sea in North Africa. And the Tethys Sea covered nearly all of the Sahara that we see today. And the Sahara that we see today is actually the river or sea bed, the bottom of the sea, of the Tethys Sea back then. So the water was salt water and it left very long ago. Just so you know. Uh, what about the erosion difference of the stones? Well, Jens Olsen, I'm gonna cover that in a future video, so I am not actually gonna give you that information today. Uh, yeah, Tigger, I uh, did have experience. I did have more than one experience standing in front of the Sekhmet statue, but like I said earlier, I'm going to keep that experience to myself. Sorry. Um, for various reasons. But I mostly felt at peace when I stood there. So yeah. What was the most significant or impressive in the Great Pyramid? The Grand Gallery. Honestly, the Grand Gallery. The sheer size of the Grand Gallery height, the massive stones fused, the height of the ceiling, the length of it, the fact that they have these wooden boards to climb up on, and it really, it's, it looks very wonky, and it doesn't walk very nicely, and it just makes you think, how on earth did they do this in ancient times? Did NEXT rap for me? I actually heard him rap more than once in the first tour. So yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> um, let's see. Can people, I, it's just an unk. There's people that want to know about my necklace. It's simply an unk symbol. It's of white gold and it has a silver necklace. It's not that important, honestly, sorry. 
Did I see water damage on the Sphinx? No, I did not see water damage on the Sphinx or near the Sphinx. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, someone asks if Homo habilis uh, discovered fire. It's possible. Although I have my money set on Homo erectus. Discovering, creating fire. So yeah. Um, what is something that I wished I would have known before I visited? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I've been to Egypt in the past, so I already sort of knew what to expect. Um, that being away from home for a month is taxing. Because I already thought that I knew, but I mean, there was nothing that could have prepared me for that, really. Um, Did I have a nice time? Yes, I did. I have a wonderful time. I did not go to Tanis, actually. Is John832 honestly asking me if they let me dress like that in Egypt? Honey, there were girls in tube tops and hot pants walking around. And they went into the monuments. They went into the temples. They went into the sites. And they were not even bothered at all. I was respectful enough to wear a t-shirt and to cover my shoulders while wearing shorts that weren't too short. So honestly, don't even ask me if people let me wear the stuff that I wear. I dress moderately for a reason. And I do this all the time, wherever I go, even in my day-to-day -day life, I dress moderately. I never dress sexy or naked or showing too much skin or whatever. So no one's going to let me dress. I dress the way I want to. That's really the wrong thing to say to a woman, especially a woman that's nearly 31 years old. Sorry, that like <clears throat> got my... <sighs> I hate when men think that I have to explain why I dress the way I do. How did I plan my trip? I didn't plan anything. I just joined a trip as a guest and then I co-hosted a trip and both trips were already completely taken care of. And they were arranged by Annie XT from adeptexpeditions.com and I highly recommend going with him on a tour in the future if you can. Henrik typed, if you go into Egypt's biggest river, despite being told there's crocodiles in there, you're in the Nile. Like it. Love it. What do I think the Valley Temple was? I don't know what the Valley Temple was. It's a very strange temple. It's massive. And it has these massive blocks. I even have this thing. Let me see. Uh, let me see. It went into the wrong one. One sec. I messed up. Why did it go to like my personal Facebook page? It shouldn't have gone there. Uh, let me, yeah, here, I got it. So the Valley Temple, I didn't show the pictures of the Valley Temple. There you go. Here you have the Valley Temple. It's strange. I don't know what it was for. I do know that these blocks were massive and uh, it's granite. The, these, these statues, like these, these massive blocks with like these lintels, they are granite. And the holes in the ground, there were, there used to be statues in there and they're not here anymore. So it's very strange. I don't know what the Valley Temple was. Good question though but yeah no i uh i have no idea uh let's go back to where i was because you know um it was greener during the ice age well but the ice age has nothing to do with the era in which all the buildings that we see in ancient e from ancient egypt were built that was way after the ice age because i do not believe in the advanced ancient civilization theory so i mean there's no proof for me 
that anything was built during the Ice Age. Again, I'm not going to share my Sekhmet statue thing. Also, yes, uh, Henrik, that's why many whale fossils were found in Egypt around Wadi El Hitan. I actually created a video about this about a year and a half ago. Highly recommend watching that. Did I get to dress up like an Egyptian? No. No, I did not. I just decided not to. Um, let's see. Um... Uh, I'm like, here I go. Okay, thank God. I figured out where I was. Oh no, it <laughs> skipped again. Why did it skip again? Okay, uh, do I think I will do a follow-on video about my Doggerland video in the future? Yes, I will definitely make a follow-up video about Doggerland in the future. Um, I do not believe that it was aliens at all. All right. Would I use the word surreal to describe my experience? Not necessarily. I wouldn't really describe the word surreal because no, no, not, not surreal. At certain temples, the, the vibe I felt was like very enigmatic, but not surreal if you get what I'm saying. Have I ever looked into Gobekli Tepe? I personally have not, and the reason for that is because I think that Matt from Ancient Architects is doing a tremendous job at covering all the Tepe sites, and I highly recommend watching him for like all that information. Yes, the cat came back, always. This cat always comes back. Uh, some claim that the pyramids are older and not really graves. What do I think? I personally think that they are tombs. You can hate me for this. and um, But I'm still baffled by them. I'm absolutely baffled by the pyramids. Is the new museum in Cairo open yet? No. Probably in November they're starting to open the first halls of it. So, um, again, we have someone talking about the climate in Egypt that was milder 6,500 years ago, but back then they didn't create these structures, so it doesn't matter, because the structures weren't being built. The civilization that we talk about when we talk about ancient Egypt weren't there yet. So, it doesn't really matter that before the time where they built things that the climate was different because it's about the time that they built things and the climate by then was similar to the climate that is today or that we have today or whatever. Uh, did I have to drink more water because of the hotter climate in Egypt? Yes, I have to drink a lot of water when I'm in Egypt, but at the same time, I also drink a lot of Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. And the reason for that is because I uh, needed the sugar and the caffeine to keep me going. And, and I very much hate water. I dislike drinking water. This is a sparkled water with a peach flavor, and I like it. So yeah. Uh, my favorite site to visit, Karnak. The Djoser Step Pyramid Complex. And I think the... Yeah, like I loved seeing the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut at Der al Barir, but at the same time, it was way too hot. <laughs> so, yeah, I loved it, but at the same time, I completely melted. So, yeah. Thank you, Tic Tac Toe, for thinking that I was 40. That's absolute bullshit. But, yeah. Uh, the pyramids were definitely built by humans. Don't know how, though. I think that Houdin, the French archaeologist, is creating 
a paper, extensive paper on the building of the pyramids. And I think Matt Sipson from Ancient Architects shared the link to that paper or where the paper will be released at least uh, on Twitter, not, a, not even a few days ago. So like highly recommend checking that out. And we have Stephen Tasker in the house. He was there on the very first tour that I was a guest on. And Stephen Tasker had some wonderful ideas and inventions that he created on how the ancient Egyptians could have possibly constructed some of their structures. So I highly recommend going to Stephen Tasker here on YouTube. He has some uh, videos explaining that. So highly recommend watching that. Is the Sphinx many years older than the pyramids? I don't think so, honestly. <laughs> My cousin Kim is asking me how the camel ride was. The camel ride was nice. I enjoyed it. I had a great time. Thank you for asking. Um, let's see. Uh, like I, it's fun if I can have a question that I can actually answer. Nothing was built in the Ice Age. No, no, no. Whoa, Marco met Achterman. I didn't say that nothing was built in the Ice Age, but I am telling you that nothing like that was built in ancient Egypt. And also, uh, everything in Turkey was probably built slightly after the last Ice Age, like in the tail end of it, while the Ice Age was already warming up. And it was then covered naturally. It wasn't buried. It was covered naturally. All the Tepe sites were covered naturally. They weren't buried at all. So just so you know, that, that's something that I do know because I do watch Matt from Ancient Architects. So yeah. And also, yes, I do have Discord. If you want to have fun conversations with me and people that follow me, go and join my Discord. So yeah. Um... Do the Egyptians who live there in the present seem to share a reverence for their amazing past? Yes. And unfortunately, at the same time, no. There are Egyptians that really don't care at all. And then there are Egyptians that are extremely proud of the legacy of their country. So that's really cool. Um, what else do we have? I'm getting really tired at this point. Wow. Whew. What is my opinion on the Egyptian artifacts located outside of Egypt? An example of the Rosetta Stone in the British Museum. Well, it depends on how the artifacts were... How they got them. Sometimes the Egyptian government in the past has given artifacts away. Sometimes as a gift, sometimes as a loan. So it depends. I don't know for certain how the British Museum got the Rosetta Stone. So I can't really say if it should be brought back or not. It depends. So, yeah. Sorry. Um, do I think that there's undiscovered pyramids? Yes, actually. Nearly every mound surrounding Cairo on like the West Bank could possibly be a pyramid, honestly. I think that there's a lot of pyramids that we don't know of yet at this point in time. Did I go and see Abu Simbel? Yes. No, no, no. Actually, no, I did go, did not go to Abu Simbel. That's way, way, way down south. It's further than the Aswan Dam. And we didn't go further south than the Aswan Dam. Sorry. I wanted to, but it's not possible. It, it took a, it, it should have taken us another day and we didn't have that day to spend. 
The head of the Sphinx definitely looks a lot smaller than the rest of the body, and the reason for that is that it was recarved, I believe. And I personally believe that the Sphinx may have had the head of a female lioness. How much did later civilizations destroy Egyptian sites? A lot. And actually also, a lot of ancient Egyptians destroyed ancient Egyptian sites. So, I mean, yeah, a lot got destroyed, unfortunately. Um, what else do we have? Do I think, yeah, we, we already did that. Um, thank you, Robert Stone, for that super chat. That's really nice of you. Um, let's see. Which experience was more fun, sitting on the back of a camel or on the back of what? Retmar. What the hell? My friend from like way, way, way back in the day, back when I was like not even 17, I think. Yes, I sat on the back of your bike because we were drinking and we had fun. But yeah, no, the camel wins. Sorry. <laughs> Where uh, was I allowed to go up on the pyramids? No, of course not. It's illegal. No one can climb on the pyramids. Also, yes, English is very common in the Netherlands. I would like to visit the Mexican sites one day in the future. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to create a video debunking aliens made X with regards to ancient constructions and tools? It would be greatly appreciated. I'll think about it. I will think about it if I can make that into like one of my theory, my fact or fiction videos. If anyone has some good uh, articles about that, like the debunking of aliens made X, Y, and Z, then uh, yeah, share them with me. Preferably on Discord because I rarely look at my Gmail because there are some people uh, that like sent me about 120 emails in less than 48 hours. So I decided to stop checking my Gmail. So sorry for that. But if you want to send me stuff, go on my Discord. The Discord link was shared by Henrik earlier, but he might share it again now that I'm talking about it. Join my Discord. Thank you. What is my opinion on Egyptian artifacts and hieroglyphics being found all over the world, if one wishes to call them Egyptian? Well, the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics are only found in ancient Egypt, and in, therefore in Egypt, unless some of the stuff was like stolen or taken or given or gifted, then it can like spread around the rest of the world. But the hieroglyphics of ancient Egypt are only found in Egypt. So, yeah. Uh, there's more time between the pyramids and Caesar than Caesar and now. Yes, there is indeed. You can say it, or like you can tell that in a funnier thing. Cleopat uh, Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of the iPhone than Cleopatra lived to the building of the pyramids. Uh, if I may, what are your thoughts on the so-called water erosion with the Sphinx? I don't believe it's water erosion. Sorry. <laughs> uh, debunk Atlantis. Hmm, maybe. It all depends. Do I find a good angle for a debunk or theory video? It all depends on, like, you know. It depends on the angle of the theories. Are there good beaches in Alexandria? What about nightlife in the boats of the Nile? I did not go to Alexandria, so I wouldn't know. I do know that the Red Sea, the entire strip of the Red Sea has nice beaches, so with some beautiful coral at some point, uh, at some points. So yeah. Also, yes, T-Rex did live closer to us than to Triceratops. Again, some amazingly wild historic facts for y'all. 
and yes, aliens did it definitely is the easiest answer. That's very wrong. Uh, what do I think about the Younger Dry's impact hypothesis? I do not believe in it, Roman Frank. I'm so sorry. Mm. I don't believe in the impact hypothesis. The world, there's so much going on right before the Younger Dry started. So much that changed the climate that eventually made it change Quite rapidly. So, I mean, yeah, no, I don't see any evidence for the hypothesis, uh, the impact hypothesis. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I feel like the erosion that we see around the Sphinx in the enclosure is mostly from sand. And I won't go into it more than I currently have by saying that. And that has to do with the future video that I'm making. So yeah, and yes, I'm drinking one cider while I'm streaming. I still have about yay much. I mean, in about two hours, I drank this bottle. So I mean, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not drinking to get like pissed or anything. I'm just drinking because I enjoy the taste. Do I think ancient Egyptians had access to advanced tech that we don't know about today? No. No. I don't, I don't think so. I think we as modern humans watching them are over-exaggerating and we need to simplify our view of the ancient Egyptians and the ancient civilizations. There must have been a much easier, simpler way to create the megalithic structures and the pyramids and all that stuff than all the, 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 the things that we try to come up with. So, yeah. Um, Mr. Mike, thank you so much for the super chat. Proof at last that the Great Pyramid wasn't built by aliens, by Smith. Smith bases is based on the Red Sea Scrolls. This is an interesting research topic. Thank you. Uh, let's see if I can copy paste that. And put that in my Discord. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. We have a couple minutes left. Uh, yes, cider has a type of yeast, but that's the type of yeast that I'm not allergic to. I can also eat bread, which also has a lot of types of yeast. It's a certain type of yeast in beer and wine that I'm allergic to. That is not found in the cider that I drink. So don't come for me and try to tell me that I'm drinking something that I'm allergic to. Because otherwise I would have known. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, that's a lot of questions in one thing. What's the most distinct archaeological artifacts to watch for since so much early materials were reused? Did bronze era stonework seem distinct? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I was mostly amazed by the first dynasties and the Middle Kingdom. I wasn't really as amazed by the Ptolemaic era. It's also not really my favorite era at all. Not at all, actually. So, yeah. Um, can't really answer that. The bronze era stonework does definitely look distinctly different. I can say that. Uh, is there evidence of hieroglyphics changing over time like most languages do over time? Yes, actually. The Ptolemaic era uses vastly different hieroglyphics than the first kingdoms, like the earlier and middle kingdoms and the dynasties. Um... There is a big difference between Hellenistic Egypt and Pharaoh's Egypt. Um, 
But yeah, I would have to like actually go into that more. Were there any sites relating to Egyptian prehistory that you were able to visit, like pre-3000 BC architecture, proto writing? No, actually, I didn't, Nadia. Sorry. Uh, Dolphins cry. In your humble opinion, I need to learn real history. Well then, dolphin cry. In your opinion what is real history because if you're telling me about ancient advanced civilizations or aliens i'm just gonna sleep okay because i am researching real history i'm actually researching the entire human evolutionary timeline and i have been doing that for the past year and that's like the realest of history that you can think of so please don't tell me what i need to do <clears throat> Sorry. Who is my favorite pharaoh? My favorite pharaoh is Hatshepsut. Has always been Hatshepsut. She is, in my mind, the most incredible pharaoh that has ever lived. She brought peace upon the lands, and she was a good ruler for a long time. A video about the change from cuneiform hieroglyphics to alphabet is very interesting, especially in regards to the Bronze Age collapse. Well, I might clear. I might look into that. Might look into that. Aslan Dan buried a lot of historical sites. Do you have an opinion of how much was lost to discovery? Well, a lot of these sites were also saved by all the countries that helped build the Aswan Dam, like the Swedish countries, the English, the Dutch, and so, so many more. And yes, there are temples around Lake Nasser that are buried still until this day, and they're buried in the Great Lake now. And it's extremely unfortunate I think most of them have been categorized, so they're not necessarily like lost, lost to discovery, but they're lost to us, if that makes any sense. So yeah. Did they worship the Pharaoh as a living God and built at their command? It's not necessarily a, at their command, um, it's like the religious people that we saw during the Crusades. They did it because they believed in it, if that makes any sense. So it's, you do it because you, you think you're doing the Lord's work. The Dutch are so good at dams, they're basically waterbenders. Hendrik, I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. Did I happen to see any of the drill holes on the Giza Plateau, which engineers claim were made with technology beyond that of ancient Egyptians? I actually did, Tigger. I actually did. And I am baffled by them. But I also think that with, sto with like sand and water and wood and friction, you can create things. So I'm unsure if it was created with a technology beyond their means. So yeah. Um, but yeah, um, right now I think that we are close to the end of the stream. And yeah. I will go back to at least one of the pictures that I have here, and then I will, oh wait, I'll go to the start of this, and at the same time, I will go and click this, and yeah, we are very close to the end of this live stream. I've streamed for a little over two hours. And I think this uh, was good. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed my trip. And I did not walk like an Egyptian. I did walk like a penguin at one point. Don't ask me why. 
the thing I apparently did. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had a great time. I hope you enjoyed my live stream and listening to my experiences. Um, my thoughts on how Egypt survived the late Bronze Age collapse. Well, they had they had it pretty difficult as well. So I mean. I would have to think, I would like actually have to look into that, Henrik, so sorry. Yes, I, I kissed the Sphinx from like a very fast distance. <laughs> but yeah, um, I had a great time. Thank you all for watching. I think it's a good thing if I probably go back to like sleep now. And yeah, I uh, probably need some more rest and then work hard the rest of this week. For videos on Friday and Sunday and um, yeah I had a great time I'm gonna leave you guys with this um, stream of like the last few pictures and once the pictures are done I'm gonna end the stream so you can leave some things in the chat if you want but I will see you guys either on Friday or on Sunday, depending on if I'm able to make two videos this week or one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.